Welcome back everybody. Um, this uh, next segment we're going to be looking, uh, as I uh, said, uh, on sanding and preparing a smooth finish uh, on uh, Oswald here. Um, just a quick uh, word on sanding, as I mentioned uh, in the very first video. Sanding does produce a lot of dust and uh, it's not particularly good for you if you're inhaling it all the time and some of these woods uh, produce uh, rather a poisonous dust and uh, some of the exotic uh, foreign woods can actually be carcinogenic um, was working on some yew and wondered why I was getting very bad headaches and uh, yew, can, uh, yew dust can produce uh, migraine so I use a respiratory type uh, uh, dust and there are filters in here which you can take out and clean uh, and it's set really at the uh, highest level of uh, filters because you are producing microfine dust. Now I'm not going to be doing a lot of sanding, this is just for demonstration so I'm not going to be wearing it otherwise uh, you wouldn't be able to. Lots of different uh, levels of uh, sand uh, paper just uh, I buy these from the usual chain store suppliers. Um, they all come with different ratings. That's a 120. Uh, that's a 180. And the lower uh, the number, the rougher they are. And they work up. Uh, I tend to use just on general work uh, three level, uh, four levels, sorry. And it goes from 120, 180 up to. Uh, 240 and then finally into 320. For tight corners um, and intricate places uh, like we've got around the ears and on some of the face uh, portions I will use these soft pads. Uh, again you can pick those up from home base or uh, B&Q. They're not very expensive but they are um, rather limited in the uh, grit sizes that you can get and they tend to be uh, pretty large um, in a sense that they're very rough. I mean there's a 60 here which uh, I would only use in extreme circumstances. Um, uh, uh, there's up to 100 and then there's a 180. It's very useful just to be able to have a, a flexible surface that you can really get into corners and things which really however careful you are with uh, a paper sander would be difficult to get to. Another um, piece of kit that I've uh, adapted this is really from a belt sander one of these very fine belt sander loops and when you have a big areas of round and you need to get that all those flat spots off because you are actually keeping that constantly moving across the round this is one occasion when you can use a flexible rounded technique keep that really tight in the vice you wouldn't really think how much leverage you're putting on that but you are quite uh, quite a lot and that's very useful for work it round and being a stick maker I obviously need to make things nice and round so they fit to hands nicely it's a kit um, but there's no escaping the hard work so we start off with the 120 and again instinctively I'm trying to work in one direction directions now you can see it's producing a lot of dust and that is going into the atmosphere so now you know why I use a respirator to 180 and again I'm working in the following the same direction trying not to rough up grains now I'm just moving quickly from one piece of wood to another because I'm using a very small area uh, but um, we are talking maybe three, four, five hours of sanding on a piece of work like this uh, uh, really a, a day's work I think is the uh, answer to uh, get the surface that you really need now I don't know whether the camera has picked that up but already we're beginning to see the effects of the smoothing action because now you can just start to see the grain showing through uh, from the wood 
Now I'm going to go into the 320 grit. For those of you who are thinking of setting up at home uh, to do this indoors, make sure you've got a very good uh, vacuum on hand. You just uh, move the uh, lens in a little bit so I hope you can start seeing the effects uh, on the wood a bit more effectively. Right, so that's the 320. And now we're beginning to see, I hope you might be able to pick that up, the uh, grain showing through and you can start seeing just how beautiful a piece of wood this is. So I'm now just going to uh, uh, give this a roll with some steel wool and that just helps to clean and just cut into the surface a bit more. And then I'm going to go into cloth. Risk that. You know, when you're using it, you're thinking, well, is that actually taking anything off? Uh, hopefully, I'll show you just how much it has taken off. Uh, there, you can see it in there. If I do that, hopefully, you'll see it all fly off. All right, I need to spend uh, a bit more time on that to uh, really get uh, a good surface uh, with the fine and the uh, uh, steel wool. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll just break off there for a minute um, and uh, then we'll come back and uh, have a look at the finished uh, sanding. Well, there we are. I think I've got it back to uh, more or less a exposure of the grain. Now I'm really not suggesting that's anything like finished. Um, as I said there's hours of work really that needs to go into that but I just hoped that uh, by spending a little time on that section uh, you might see the obvious effects of sanding uh, and uh, filing can make uh, to bring up the, the finish of the wood. So that's really the uh, end of uh, <laughs> this section and uh, I think I'll uh, take a quick drink because although I've just been uh, 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 working for half an hour or so on this um, uh, I notice there's quite a lot of dust around and I need to clear my throat and then we'll come back and look at uh, briefly some of the polishes and the uh, uh, final finishes um, that uh, produce uh, hopefully the quality uh, of uh, sticks that I like to offer to the public. Okay then, Noodle, press the button and put the kettle on.